All right. And let me fade that out. Oh, cool, cool. There we go. And welcome to the show. Welcome to Bad Science, Good Science with Jim Bruce and my co-host, Jeremy Paul. Hello, Jeremy. Hey, how you doing, Jim? Uh, it's good to see you. I hope, uh, I hope anybody who tunes in and likes this show. But before we get into the meat of it, I kind of want to talk about our theme song. I hope you like the theme song, but we haven't settled on a permanent theme song. That was, we'll do a different one, and eventually we'll settle on a permanent theme song. Uh, so if you liked that song, write us, email us, text us, Twitter, wherever you want to talk to us, Facebook, Instagram, it doesn't matter. Give us an opinion. Let Jeremy know what you thought. Let me know what you thought. But I want to find out what Jeremy thought. What did you think of that jam? I think it was it was nice. Like, I haven't heard that song before. Was that, like, uh, like mid-70s? Yeah, absolutely. It is. Well, I'm an older fellow. I think I might actually be older than you. I was born in 68. When were you born? 78. 78. There you go. When I was a kid, I, I had remembered hearing that song on Sonny and Cher. Oh, okay. Okay. And it wasn't, a, obviously, not a Sonny and Cher song. You could tell that. Right. No, yeah. But I like... I like how it felt. It was one of those weird, had a little bit of a disco vibe to it, but it somehow also had the seventies rock thing going. Yeah. And it and um a lot of walleye in that. So I was like, that's that's a weird era. Yeah. I think it's funny that it never got sampled for any hip hop because it's got that nice middle piece. Yeah. Like honestly, if I was gonna if I was gonna sample something and try to make my own song i would pull that middle piece right out yeah that, it was it was i won't i won't say rocking but it was not it was rocking it was it was nice I yeah it. yeah just it's great so um it may end up being our permanent theme i don't know uh jeremy likes it i like it uh let me know what you guys thought um uh the name of the show is good science bad science uh as an introduction to what Jeremy, Jeremy and I are going to be talking about, um, if something is scientific, it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It Obviously, the goal is for it to be true. What we want to talk about is more to try to get people to understand what science is. I feel like America is in such a messed up place as far as scientific literature that it isn't so much that people don't know the prevailing theories because some scientists don't know all the prevailing theories. It's that I don't think people know what the fuck science is to begin with. <laughs> Very true. And it's the hatred of hatred of anybody intelligent uh, or more intelligent than they are that uh, makes it that much difficult, more that much more hurtful and difficult uh, to grasp. I think one of the things I would like to see more, because listen, I'm reasonably smart, but I'm dumb about a lot of things. And what I will do is I'll do this thing where I recognize that I'm not an expert. <laughs> and then I will listen to the person who is. Huh? Right? So That's what you're supposed to do. Like, I, honest to God, if you put five 50 year old white dudes in a room together just five 50 year old white dudes at some point they're going to offer their opinions on menstruation and the black experience oh definitely <laughs> and, and they will do so unironically and they will think they've come to some conclusion without ever consulting somebody who might be an expert <laughs> It's just like uh, when guys walk into a room and it's like, yeah, I think I could take that person. Like, no, you can't. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Every, Absolutely. Everybody does it. So, so Jeremy and I are both curious comedians, but we are comedians first and foremost. So the first thing I want to do since it's the first episode is I want to ask Jeremy a couple questions um, and then he can ask me questions. But the one I want to ask, because it's a, fucking pandemic when was the last live show you did oh live show yeah. uh like oh wow that's uh i did i think i did one in february 
Like that's how long it's been. Like I, I honestly don't remember. Uh, it might have been February though, like like late February. Um, yeah, I want to say late February. You know, I legit miss free buffet tickets. <laughs> Like, I would so love to be in a dirty hotel right now, uh -huh. walk through a smoky fucking casino, and tell jokes to people with, a, with addiction problems. I would so love um, that right now. Like, the, the people that are going out there and they're doing drive-in uh, drive movie theaters and whatnot, like, I, would, I would love to go out there and get booked for it, but, you know, like I, like I was telling you before we started, I just got diagnosed with diabetes. Uh, if you if you know the statistics, uh, anybody that has diabetes that catches COVID is twenty percent more likely to die. Yeah, so I, I can't go out. I'm like, oh, well, this is fun. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I can't trust people that drive in movie theaters. <laughs> so uh, I'm stuck inside until everybody you know figures it out. Yeah, you know it's funny because the pandemic people react to different, but lots of different ways. Some people get dogs. Yeah. Some people will redecorate. Uh huh. Um, some people, um, you know, get new girlfriends, new boyfriends. <laughs> I've been buying things on Wish. Uh, you got diabetes. <laughs> you got diabetes for some fucking reason. Well, that too. <laughs> like, hey, what do I want during the pandemic? Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pot. And that, here's the second part about the diabetes is that, like, I'm, I, I, I don't have the extreme diabetes. I don't have that, you know, like I, a friend of mine today, uh, his girlfriend just announced that he was diagnosed with diabetes and his level was at 500. Like his blood sugar was at 500. I talked to another friend of mine. She was like, my number was 275. What is yours? I was like, 112. <laughs> I was like, I'm just, I'm just barely a diabetic. <laughs> like it's the fucking worst. So everybody's like, why are you even telling people you're diabetic? You're at 112. The, the, the cutoff is 99 and you're 112. It's like, because I have to take the medicine. I'm still a diabetic, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it sucks, but it's true. I did not know there was a pecking order with diabetics. <laughs> <laughs> there really is. Like, man, some people lose toes. I'm not in that kind of category. I'm not in, that, I'm not in the toe losing category. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, in the, dude, you got, you're going to keep your feet. Shut up. <laughs> Like, my, my life is just pure inconvenience right now, whereas, like, I want Taco Bell damn near every day or anything with cheese on it, but I can't. I can't have that. I have to eat fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of legumes in my diet right now. Metamucil. Yeah, I can't do, by the way, I can't do the legumes. I can't do the nuts. Anaphylactic oh, wow. shock allergic. Oh, God damn. Which is a funny thing. that uh, So one of the things I got to do during the pandemic is uh -huh. ride in an ambulance because <laughs> I was out with this girl and we had food and uh, I said, are there nuts in this to the person we bought the food from? And they said, oh no. And they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'll tell you, it disrupted the date. <laughs> it disrupted the night for sure. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a cock blocker right there. That's a yeah. boob killer. That is not cool. <laughs> like like I was, I was engorged. That's for sure. Just not the part <laughs> I wanted. Just right uh, around here, not here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the uh, walnuts, nature's <laughs> yeah. nature's throat uh, Viagra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty amazing. So. Uh, here's the topic I picked for this week and Jeremy and I, I let Jeremy know it's not like a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a long time ago, there was this theory about the universe and it's called the steady state theory. Yeah. And the steady state theory roughly, uh, expressed says that the universe in some form or another has always existed and it always will exist and that it may change over time, but, and it's always expanding. Part of it is that it's always expanding, infinitely expanding. And a weird part of the theory is that the reason the universe 
looks the way it does is because as it expands, new matter is created to fill the space. And that's why the universe is not filled with a lot of empty space. That was the prevailing theory about how our universe came to look the way it looks. And a lot of different scientists believed that, including a gentleman by the name of Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was a big proponent of the steady state theory. He described it as elegant. He thought it was an elegant way to look at the universe. Lots of math written to explain how that could be true. Interesting thing, by the way, if you, the more you look at physics, the more you realize the math can be perfect. Yeah. And the science could turn out to be trash. Exactly. Which is funny, the math can be right. But that doesn't mean it's true. So, um, so first of all, Jerry, why don't you share your thoughts on why people thought that was a good theory? I think people were amazed by the fact that, like you, like you, like you were saying, it's elegant, where it, it's it's complex enough to make sense, because before then, uh, people were, you know just in the dark about a lot. They had no right. idea what, what most most theories were even going to lead to. Right. So, yeah, you know, so this was complex enough and had the backing of, like, people, uh, the guy that, what's the guy's, uh, Hoyle is the one that came up with this, right? That's right, Hoyle. Yeah, so I, I didn't even look that up. I just remembered. Uh, <laughs> so. I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> so. You have people like uh, like Hoyle uh, who came up with it and Einstein backing it. So it automatically lent, lent credence to the fact that this was a beautiful thing and could be true. And like you said, the math worked out. So if people were, were questioning it, they had to question harder than they usually would have. Right. Now, um, so I would say that in the very beginning, that's absolutely very good science. Yeah. Um, you had Hoyle specifically, and actually, actually, Sir James Jean in 1920. I looked yeah. that up. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they had no. They had all the things you need for good science. And so, what do you need for good science? Number one, you need a bedrock theory that's predictive, and that's testable, mm -hmm. and that's falsifiable. Yeah. So one of the best thing, a really good theory could be falsified. Um, and you hope that it isn't, but what, what, what it means to say it could be falsified is, all right, here's the theory. But if this other set of conditions turns out to be true instead, then we know it's not true. But if this other set of conditions is true, then it's true. So basically there have to be stakes it has to make a prediction and there has to be a way you could disprove it um, or at least test it, right? Test the boundaries yeah. of the theory. One of the things that early proponents pointed out was that background radiation seemed to support this theory because the universe, the universe is strangely uniform, meaning it doesn't have a lot of bumps. It's like, if you look, if you're in our neighborhood, which, by the way, is the shittiest neighborhood in the universe. <laughs> and if you're billions of light years that way or that way, it's more or less space is about the same. It's about equally full. It's about equally dense. There aren't weird lumpy parts. It's just yeah, about yeah. the same. Homogenous. Exactly. Um, yeah. Just the way they like it in the South. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, the thought was well if the universe was always here ever expanding that's kind of what you'd think it would look like you wouldn't expect it to be because it's not a developing phenomena but then there were other things like neutron stars at a distance that were like well we really shouldn't see that yeah and then um Lemaitre, who was a, uh, and that I can remember because I always remember his name, 
Catholic <laughs> bishop. He was a Catholic bishop, which is weird. He was a religious man, but he was also a math nerd. He looked mm -hmm. at Einstein's theory of relativity and he just did the math. And he said, well, according to the theory of general relativity, the universe is getting bigger every day. Well, that means it was smaller yesterday. It was smaller the day before. And if you were going back in time, eventually it would be infinitely small. And that's where he came up with the idea of the primordial atom. And I'm going to share a bit of trivia with Jeremy, and I want to know if he knew this. The first person to call it the Big Bang was doing so to make fun of the theory. Did you know that? Did not. Isn't that funny? The <laughs> guy, Hoyle hated it. Hated it. And so in an op-ed article, he said, um, Lemaitre with his ridiculous Big Bang theory, as if the universe just went pop. And he was so <laughs> mad that at the time, that was a diss. Wow. And then it became <laughs> the name. It became the name. It was as if, like, if you at one time went, yeah, Jim's a real fuckface. And then later on, I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm fuckface. <laughs> Started, came out with the, with the Sir Nose Nose on. Yeah. And then everybody was like, you know who I like? Fuckface. I think he's great. Oh, that, that fuckface is hilarious. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's that's actually hilarious that that bizarre the, the name comes from like a frustrated scientist mad about his own theory being uh tested yep didn't and know uh, einstein didn't like it either einstein hated the theory he said um he said your math is right but your theory is I don't remember the exact word he used, but it was basically like, your math is right, but your theory is basically he couldn't stomach the idea. He didn't like it. It right. made him uncomfortable. It's funny because a guy like Einstein, very bright, yeah. my understanding is, but he was still a human being. And we yeah. are all still kind of locked into views <laughs> that make us comfortable. I think it's because he thought he figured it out. He was like, oh, we have the answer. Yep. No. <laughs> there, yep. no, that wasn't the answer. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, you know, Newton, Newton probably would have went nuts when he realized that Einstein changed the <laughs> gravity. He would have went nuts. Right. Yeah. And that's another good example. The theory of gravity is a, of Newton's is a fine theory. Well postulated, but the truth is it's not quite right. It's right enough that NASA still uses all the equations. If they send a ship into space, they're using Newtonian, Newtonian physics. Yeah. Like but, they, it's an homage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it works for sending rockets into space. It doesn't work for describing how gravity works. To be honest, Newton had no fucking idea how gravity works. He even said so. Yeah. He, uh, he at the kind of the end of his theories, he's like, here's all my math. And also, when it comes to gravity, I think that's a God thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people, uh, what's the old quote? People use God to explain uh, what they don't already know or something like that? Right, yeah, the God of the gaps. Yeah. Yeah, the God of the gaps, which if you believe in the God of the gaps, just know that your God is going to get smaller and smaller. That's just what happens. <laughs> so here's the thing about steady state, Jeremy. Uh -huh. I looked it up. There are still people who believe the steady state theory is right, that believe that the Big Bang theory is wrong. Um, and <laughs> they try to defend it. But what's funny to me, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. They're now engaging in bad science. Yeah. That's bad science. The theory hasn't changed. But it, so it was good science. Now it's bad. So what makes it bad science is after it's disproven, you're supposed to move on. Yeah, you're supposed to either find newer evidence or 
Oh yeah, move on. Like if you're if, if you have if you find more evidence of your of the theory of being of steady state being true, then you test that and go along the steps to say, hey, this is new evidence to this. Yes. But they're probably just arguing the old evidence as if that's still plausible. And it's not. And that's pretty much the 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 crux of it is that they revisit old evidence. And the thing about <laughs> There's this weird thing in society where people are constantly criticizing other people for a very weird thing. They criticize politicians, they criticize scientists, and they almost always say, they'll say a very similar thing, which is, oh, they changed their mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Smart people do that. Yeah. You're supposed to. Right. Like sci in science and in music, you're supposed to evolve. Right. <laughs> you yes. Don't keep making the same album over and over again. You have to get better at some point. How great would that be that everybody's just fucking play making the same big band the record? <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's out there, hide it, hide it, hide it. It's like, no, we moved on from Cal Calloway. Now we have uh, what's the new song written? What ass pussy? Uh, that's. <laughs> that's like, I guess hidey 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 ho with the wet ass pussy. We we here now. We uh you know <laughs> we gotta evolve. Yeah, it's it's always been my I've always found it so amazing that people hold up their inability to change their position as a virtue. Yeah. You know, like it's just like when you meet a guy who like grew up in a town of four hundred people. And he goes, I lived here my whole life. And you're like, dude, uh, that, that ain't nothing to brag about. <laughs> so, so <it> ain't. <laughs> That's likely your cousin you're married to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and your cousin could have done better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. And, it, and that's the thing to understand about the scientific method. The other thing is um, a lot of smart people, very smart people, I should say, also reject science now mm -hmm. because we've undermined it as a culture. Yeah. As a culture, we've, we reward the idea that every view deserves to be heard, which is just not true. Yeah, there are dumb questions. <laughs> yeah, there really are, yeah. And, and if you ask the dumb question, but you get the good answer, if you can take the good answer, okay, we're good. But that's never true. Yeah. You know, you don't argue with Richard Dawkins about evolution. You listen to him. That's all. Right. He knows what's up. That's all. <laughs> and, that's... and you cannot like a fact. But the thing about facts is, you know, you can't hurt a fact's feelings. <laughs> They're just right. true. Right. Um, I like the Big Bang Theory a lot. Now, I I don't know if I'm Jeremy. Tell me if you're like me. I, are are you are you religious at all? Not at all. Okay. Um, would you consider yourself an agnostic or an atheist or a secular humanist or what? Well, as a friend of mine and myself believe, uh, truthfully, everybody's agnostic. Truthfully, because none of us really know. Yeah. But. I would I would put myself in the category of strict denial. Like, no, uh, <laughs> I'm an atheist. Like, no, there's no, no. I know that I don't know. Yeah. But, but I also know that they don't know either. Yeah. Like, none of the religions actually know. Uh, so I, I have to go by my, my own personal belief is no. Uh, none of these gods are real. Uh, all your theology is wrong. Because here, my... Uh, I was explaining it to one of my cousins once. I was like, look, we've just barely, we haven't even figured out light travel yet. Uh, how in the fuck do you think we've figured out, like, if there's a God? Right. Like, there, there might be other uh, civilizations in, say, like, the Andromeda Galaxy <laughs> like that, that actually haven't figured out, and their God isn't named Yahweh. Uh, it's right. something else entirely. So... <laughs> it's like our religion might not nobody's religion on this planet might not even be right 
So I have to be an atheist because we don't know enough about what's been said already. But if you bring the evidence to me, like if there's a, a picture or a voice or anything that wasn't written by warlords in the in the 200s, uh, <laughs> like, fine, I'll, I'll accept it. But, you know, yeah, but that's my explanation. Yeah, as has often been pointed out, when God was visiting Moses, the Chinese were inventing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, another bit of uh, language trivia. This is just a coincidence, but uh, do you know the origin of the word agnostic? Oh, uh, from Nost. Uh, I can't remember the etymology of the word. It was also a joke. Isn't that really? funny? Yeah, it was Thomas Huxley, and he was trying to describe himself, and he said, well, the Gnostics considered themselves knowledgeable because Gnostic Gnosis, of course, is knowledge, and he goes, yeah. so I guess that makes me an agnostic, and a meaning without. Right. So I'm not saying it's a great joke, but it was a joke at the time. <laughs> and I think right. it's funny because he just, he said that, and then it became a thing. So oh, yeah. <laughs> agnostic and Big Bang both started out as jokes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have, I don't really know if there's a God. I think there probably isn't, but what I, I often speculate that if there is a God, that he's a dick. That's <laughs> just my theory. I think there could be a God, but he's just rude. Cause right. what, what basic, what it comes down to for me, cause I think religion is fine. Um, but it's funny how I find much more comfort because I think religion and art and mm -hmm. sex and food are just a lot of people need to be comforted in a pretty brutal world. And I get it. Whatever it is you have to do. I find cold, hard science strangely comforting <laughs> because I you know, the Big Bang basically tells me that the universe is probably going to end in um, heat death. Just going to grow cold and distant. And I find that comforting because unlike a religious principle or whatever, it's just true. So it, it doesn't ask anything of me. And it also doesn't ask me to believe there's a grand plan. Yeah. Because... If there is a grand plan, I want to talk to whoever made me grow up in Arizona. Because that's some fucking shit. I am fucking pale as shit. Skin cancer is built into me. So if that's God's plan. Why the fuck wasn't I Oregon? Right? Or fucking France? Yeah. I'm in fucking Arizona? That's a bad plan. Seattle. <laughs> Anywhere that's cloudy. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I would have questioned myself. Like, really? You, you really want me to grow up in the projects? And, <laughs> like, really? Really, huh? <laughs> really that's, that's, that was the plan, huh? <laughs> like, again, if it's, or what if, what if there could be, let's just say there's a God and he's huh? not a dick. What if he's just woefully incompetent? <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, or like the uh, what's the, what? What if it's not one of the Ab what if it's not the Abrahamic God? It's, it's everybody's uh, just believing in the wrong God. It's it's one yeah. of the twenty seven hundred other gods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> religions. It was, it's some very es esoteric God who the whole time is going, "Come on, come on, it's me, it's me." <laughs> Yeah, like it, it's it's what what are those guys with the uh, with the symbols that stand on the corners? The, <laughs> like, uh, uh, what are they called? The guys in the robes. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> no, like they 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 bang symbols, walk around on the corners. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the I don't know. Yeah, what if it's their god? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite of all the gods are the ones that, that don't come to your door. Oh, yeah. yeah those. Like, that's why, like, I think Judaism is kind of cool. Because for the most part, 
Jews don't care if you want to join. They just don't. Yeah. You like, I, we don't care. Just, and if you, I don't know if you've ever been to, have you ever been to synagogue? No, haven't been. The food is so much better than any Christian service. <laughs> I'll tell you something about Christianity. Any religion that serves jello, not true. <laughs> not true. I don't care what you believe. If you go to your church and they have fucking jello with fucking shaved carrots in it, no. See, that's 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 white Christianity. That's not the black Christianity. <laughs> like the entirely different Christianities there. Uh, right. you know, I grew up in a in a Baptist home. <laughs> so, you know, fried chicken, okra, that kind of thing, you know. Okay, I could believe that. <laughs> like that they they make sure you believe or at least get diabetes. If I went to one of my services and there was fried fucking chicken and okra, I'd go, maybe, okay. <laughs> maybe. If there's black beans and rice, I'm like, all right, okay, okay. Uh-huh. I, I hear you. I hear you, Reverend. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I okay. <laughs> well, I show up and there's fucking Jello. <laughs> I always remember, uh, and that ain't. I'm not making that up because when I did go to church, I went to a Methodist church, uh-huh. and man, talk about talk about white. That's a yeah. white white church. <laughs> and, uh, and the, and the food was shitty. Yeah. And when I started going to synagogue, synagogue food is great. It's really good uh-huh. food. First of all, who doesn't like bread? <laughs> who doesn't like bread? <laughs> and ain't nobody making you freaked out as a kid going, oh, this is blood. Nobody does that. Right. In fact, there's a specific rule against blood. <laughs> um, and chicken, very competitive. Very competitive with fried chicken is Jewish chicken. It's really good. Okay. Legitimate. So I'm just saying, as far as possible religions, Jews sleep in on Sundays. Nice. Sleep in on Sundays. We ain't going to bother you on Saturdays. Okay. Okay. Always food. And now, not even a joke. If you ever did go to synagogue, one of my favorite parts is there's a part when they're talking about the Bible or the Torah mm-hmm. where you're allowed to go, hold on a minute, Rabbi, and you're allowed to say stuff and disagree. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That is cool. So it becomes a debate. Yep. It's a, it's a very vibrant part of – so it isn't just some dipshit mouthing off and then taking your money. It's a guy. <laughs> and then not putting anything towards the food budget. Right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the for, legit, if you like thoughtful discourse about, well, what does this particular verse mean or whatever? There's legitimately, there is, um, there's an old Jewish thing, proverb that goes, um, there is no man more revered or less respected than the rabbi. <laughs> always, which is great. Which is Very true, great. actually. <laughs> yeah, I uh, no, I, when I was a kid, when I was like seven or eight, my mom left her church, sure. so I've I have I of course had to go with her. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't mind either way, uh, and she she went on this whole journey of trying to find a church for her. So I grew up reading all these religious books. Like uh, I, I read Dianetics when I was a kid. We actually, we actually got that book. Uh, I, read, I read, like, I read the book, like, uh, the Church of, what's it called? Uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints book. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, yeah, but, no, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. yeah I read that. I, I, so I've, I've read through a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, I guess, mainstream religion books. Uh, and of course, you know, I, it's, it, the funniest thing about my mom trying to find a church is I met, uh, when I was a kid, I met, what was, I think his name's Benny Hinn or Billy, Billy Hinn or something like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hold on, Uh, hold on a second. Yeah. Okay. There we go. We're still good. Okay. But I I met him like, cause he was traveling and he came through Peoria 
and he was in, at the he went to the ba- they had a service in the basement of this church, and I was my me and my mom went, and they were speaking in tongues and doing all that shit, and my mom stood up and did the speaking in tongues, and they blew her over and like, like pushed her in the face, and she fell down, and then they're like, "Hey, get a son too," and then I walk up there. And I was already an atheist. I, I was mad because I was like, I'm missing football right now. Uh, <laughs> so, like, they did the whole speaking in tongues. Like, all right, you gonna speak in tongues? I was like, all right, blah 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 blah. They're like, yeah, speaking in tongues. And then he blew on me, but I didn't fall because I didn't know I was supposed to fall. Uh... <laughs> and, then, and then he pressed his hand on me, and I didn't. I was like, oh, I don't know when I'm supposed to fall here. You're supposed to wait for the spirit to hit you, right? And then he just pushed me over. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was supposed to fall. I didn't realize I was fucking parlor tricking it. All right, good. <laughs> yeah. So, let me know uh, when I'm supposed to play the game and give me a piece of the action. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I saw the, I saw the music video for Say, Say, Say. Like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not in on that. Like, Paul McCartney was in on the uh, fucking thing, and Michael Jackson laid the in on it. Like, let me get a little taste. <laughs> Let me get a little taste of that orange juice, buddy. That carrot juice. Uh, that's pretty fucking great. <laughs> that's pretty great. I, uh, when I was a kid and I went to church, I went to a church that none of my family went to. Oh. Because I was very curious, and uh-huh. uh, I started going to church. And so I told my mom, I'm going to go to this church. And she said, fine. And I went to this church, and I was, uh, I believe it was actually Baptist. Mm-hmm. And then eventually I was like, I'm not going to that church anymore, mom. And she went, oh, okay. And she wasn't part of the journey at all for me. It's always been a very solitary. Um, I know that's unique. Like I, I don't, I don't know if I've ever met anybody who's done that because there was a church. My, my family didn't go. So I thought I would go to find out what it's all about. And then um, there's an old saying, if you want to, if you want to become a Christian, have somebody teach you the Bible. If you want to become an atheist, read it yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> and now I know that there are some very strong believers who are also very wise and they're mm-hmm. very thought, very thoughtfully read the Bible. And so I certainly can't knock that. There's some of the most beautiful people we've had in our culture. You talk about Mr. Rogers, obviously. And yeah. Talk about Dr. King and, you can go through yeah. a list of people who were incredible, but I will say that if you took the list of religious people who are amazing and the list of people who are <laughs> giant pieces of shit and you put them on a scale, it would be like this. It just yeah. would. It just would. Yeah. And if you take the list of like, I remember uh, hearing, I remember Christopher Hitchens one time somebody was pointing out all the good things that the Catholic church has done in Africa. And he said, well, you damn well better be, they damn well better considering all the damage they did first. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that's often the case. Um, uh, and, and anybody listening, by the way, Jeremy and I are going to try very hard not to make this <laughs> show a weekly bashing of religion. This is really just us getting yeah, this- the bearings. This went weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is fine. Um, yeah. To get back into, so just to talk about the Big Bang Theory and what makes it a good yeah. theory. Um, the cool thing about the Big Bang is that <coughs> for a long time, people weren't sure if it was true because certain conditions had to be met that they couldn't test for. And uh-huh. then the Hubble telescope was built. Yeah. And the Hubble telescope accidentally confirmed the Big Bang. And that's really ideal because they didn't look for evidence to fit the theory. They looked at the evidence and it happened to fit the theory. Yeah. Wasn't, it was the, the microwaves, right? Correct. Well, it was two things. Um, the microwave, oh, the microwave radiation is kind of a funny story. So they built this telescope and cost millions of dollars, maybe billions. And they heard this hum and they thought that the, it might be broken because they were listening to the universe and there was this dumb hum. 
And then we're like, fuck, we messed up. We screwed up this, um, these instruments are screwed up. And in any direction they pointed the dish, they heard the same hum. And they were like, okay, we got to fix this because it's so expensive, this equipment. Mm -hmm. Finally, they realized, oh, it's not broken. That hum is coming from everywhere and it's identical. <laughs> And that's the background radiation. That's you're exactly yeah. what you're talking about. It's uniform, which is bizarre, but only makes sense if there was a big bang. And it only, because it's basically, it's basically the echo of the loudest explosion there ever was. Yeah. <laughs> fucking cool, which is cool as shit. And um, it's also that, the Hubble telescope uh, confirmed something we didn't necessarily know. So I, I guess I shouldn't say it confirmed it. It demonstrated that mm -hmm. the rest of the universe is like um, a hot lady at a construction site. It's running away from us. <laughs> the rest of the universe is leaving as fast as it can. Most In of all it. Directions. In all directions, the universe is going away from us because – and. You can't blame the universe. We're shitty. But um, yeah. that was one of the early indications that, oh, the universe is indeed expanding just wow. like the Big Bang would predict. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty good science nerd joke off the top of my head, huh? That's, that's actually pretty decent. <laughs> <laughs> like the, uh, like, uh, one, of the, one of the problems with the, of the, of the Big Bang is the fact that I don't think we're in the, as far as most theories go, uh, I don't think we're in the right position in, the, in our in our galaxy to be able to see it all. Though that's we are a terrible position. Yeah, um, so a lot of things can't be confirmed. You're, uh, yeah, you're right. There are aspects. Here's a funny thing that I heard: if we as a species survive, let's imagine we survive a billion years. We're not going to. No, we won't be <laughs> making another thousand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm crossing my fingers for Wednesday. <laughs> um, but let's say we did. The uh -huh. nature of the expansion of the universe goes like this. If, let's say we, well, how about this? Society collapses. That uh -huh. can happen. But it recovers. And there's a new species that's able to build telescopes and look out in the universe. They will not come up with the Big Bang Theory. They won't be able to figure it out. Because things by then, because the universe is expanding, will be too far away for them to have any evidence. Yeah. Their, their part of the neighborhood will basically be, as far as they're concerned, they'll, they'll be like, well, I guess at the beginning of the universe there was nothing, and now there's one thing. <laughs> be and, you know, the nature of it, is, of course, is heat death, unless, unless string theory is true, which... Who knows? It's untestable. It's cute, but it's untestable. So no, my favorite thing about all of it is that uh, and, you know, because in what it was uh, four and a half billion years from now, uh, Andromeda and Milky Way are going to combine, right? right. So, uh, but what this leads to the question I was going to ask you: uh, what, what, which one of our planets in our solar system is getting ejected? <laughs> like, there's going to be at least one one planet in our solar system that gets ejected, right? <laughs> so, is it Earth? Does Earth get spun out, <laughs> spun out into the into the depths of space? <laughs> Here's what I hope, Jeremy. This is what I hope. When that happens, I hope they have some kind of a contest to decide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope they're like, well. Uh, first is the beauty portion. <laughs> now the talent. <laughs> yeah, Mercury comes out with a tuba. <laughs> ah, gotta give it up for Mercury. <laughs> gotta give it up for Mercury. Sneaking in from behind. All right, Mercury, you get to stay. <laughs> Mercury, would you accept this rose? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I just... I think because I, you know, I've been writing a book for like nice. the, I've been writing a book for like the last eleven years. 
<laughs> that has to do it deals with the future. So okay. there's a lot of things that I've I've studied over the last decade that I know now that I didn't know, you know, 11 years ago, of course. Uh, so that's why I actually know a lot of these things as opposed to when I was a kid reading the same books and forgetting all the shit <laughs> after high school in, into my 20s. Like, oh, like, I remember all this now. Uh, but uh, yeah, the fact that there, a, lot of the, a lot of the solar systems or a lot of the systems that exist are going to be ejecting planets to make room yep. for Andromeda's uh, uh, solar systems and, and various dwarf systems and gaseous balls just to make room. So a lot of places, a lot of things are going to be playing pool out there. You know? right. <laughs> we just have to be, I get, as a species, have to be alive to see it. Like, that's why I, I'm like, you know what? Fucking put me in this computer. <laughs> I yeah. want to get around for that. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. This is something, a thought I've had. I've looked around. I don't think anyone else has had this thought. So, uh -huh. But maybe they have. Tell me if they have. Um, the end of the universe is hypothetically heat death, right? Uh -huh. Everything yeah. gets farther and farther apart. Second law of thermodynamics, less order, more chaos. Um, everything more or less becomes inert, uh, even to the point where even atoms are no longer bound together. That's the premise, is that billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of years, even, even particles are no longer held together. They burst apart yeah and then there truly is absolute nothingness i have thought to myself well when you describe that condition that condition of absolute nothing which has never really existed even in a test tube there's never really absolute nothing there just isn't right. even the best the best laboratory in the world approximates nothing it's one of the few things you can't really get to but at that point, there's truly nothing. And I have thought to myself, well, prior to the Big Bang, and obviously the word prior is complicated because there is no prior before time. But let's say the, the moment before the Big Bang, that's also what the universe would have looked like. So are those the conditions under which a Big Bang happens? Is it? that once you get to absolute uniformity, where the fabric of space is truly flat and mm -hmm. empty and everything's inert, there are no bound particles together, is that the trigger for a, a cycle of a Big Bang? That's a thought I've had. So <laughs> here's my underdeveloped theory. <laughs> well, to think of, Given that thought, uh, where everything is so spread out that it collapses, just physically collapses, right? Is that because, what you're going with? Well, because at that point, there is truly nothing. There's no longer, yeah. because, that, because what's supposed to happen, according to the math, uh -huh. is that the most basic elements will fly apart. There's yeah. no longer, you know, there's no longer anything. There's no, no longer atomic structure. Everything is... Yeah, it's like, all gone. Quarks, boom, yeah. gone. So at that point where there's absolutely a truly nothing, I, I think about the fact that I've never experienced nothing. I, I, by the way, I've been obsessed with the idea of nothing for a <laughs> long time because it's... It's such a meaningless concept in a certain way. To describe nothing, it's weird, but if you describe nothing, you're really not describing anything because there isn't nothing. There's no area of nothing. But at that point, according to the theory, the math is everything flies apart. So is that the trigger? And by the way, the, this, by the way, is almost a worthless theory because there's no testing it. Right. But it's more a thought experiment. Well, Does it actually, you could test it. Rubber bands. Like if you pull a rubber band tight enough, it becomes flat, right? Right. And this, the more you pull a rubber band, uh, 
sure it gets flatter and flatter, but eventually it breaks. Right. And that will be in effect the the bang, so to speak. Oh yeah, okay. I follow the logic. That makes sense. It, it's um, it's an analogy rather than a test, but it does. Yeah. So that's very thoughtful. That's very nice. I like that. It's elegant. <laughs> well, the other. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Well, I was going to say the other. The other theory goes. So there's a the one. So the thing I don't like about heat death. And again, the fact that I don't like it doesn't mean it's not true. Um, mm -hmm. As we demonstrated, Einstein didn't like a thing and it still was true. But it would make <laughs> a weird situation. So it, it would seem weird to me to say that the universe had an, a definitive start, the Big Bang, right? An, an absolute start. Mm -hmm. And then it has heat death, which is more or less a definitive end. And then nothing else around it. Mm -hmm. it doesn't seem logical to me it doesn't seem logical that i understand there is no time before the big bang because essentially the clock starts at the big bang there is no time because time is a product of motion um but it troubles me to imagine that there just wasn't anything over here and that there wouldn't be anything over here right uh, which is why i think there has to be, it's almost like I'm saying there has to be a winding up moment, right? Uh -huh. uh, one of the other possible things was that has been speculated by men way smarter than me uh, are that it's like soap bubbles and there's universes popping in and out of existence all the time. Yeah, oscillating theory. Yeah. And okay. uh, I'll be that's honest. Like, that's comic book theory, basically. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I struggle to picture that. Mm -hmm. But I often say this when it comes to physics, I'm a tourist. I like it, <laughs> but, and I'll read about it all day long. But yep. the vast majority of the math is way above me. Yeah, uh, I, I, did not, uh, I did not finish, I think, Algebra 2 in college. Right. So, <laughs> like, hey, man. I, I know the theories. I, I just can't prove my theories. So yeah. And I can grasp, I can grasp. I don't know. I, I understand physics as much as I think my dog understands the refrigerator. <laughs> you know, my dog knows food comes from it, uh -huh. but I don't think my, my dog understands that I put the food in there first. Right. He just knows <laughs> if you open that door, there's food in there. That's all he knows. Yeah. And for me, it's like I can, I, I can understand general relativity up to a point. I can understand. I understand quarks. I understand spooky action at a distance. But like for the longest time, you know Schrodinger's cat, you know, <laughs> you know Schrodinger's cat, right? Yeah. For the longest time, I thought they were talking about a real cat because it's just a dumb guy. <laughs> I didn't understand that it was just a, an analogy. So I was like, why the fuck are they fucking with this cat? <laughs> yeah, it's just like dog whistles, right? <laughs> like, <Yep>. what the fuck? <laughs> it just seems rude. Yeah. Like, so that, one of the things I like, I like, I'm a huge comic book reader. Like, I've always been a huge comic book reader. And they're, they're huge on the multiverse, the multiverse theory and oscillating theories. So... Like currently, uh, in one of the runs, like of a uh, Fantastic Four, uh, like Reed Richards, their his son Franklin Richards is like has created multiple different universes, and <laughs> so like he's restarted the universe and he's restarted the mul restarted the multiverse. So now, every, like he's the god of mul <laughs> of Marvel, <laughs> like yeah. he's the creator of, of all the various worlds, of all the various Earths that exist. He's the creator of. Yep. I will say that one of the universes Franklin Richards created was real shitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it, it's gotten really fucked. <laughs> the uh I like I like the version of Thor he created. I found that interesting. The of Captain America was a dick. <laughs> oh no, I did not like that at all. 
I did not like that at all. I guess Franklin <laughs> Richards could follow my theory of a god who's a dick. Yeah, it's like a, a complete. Uh, what, what's the word? It's a uh, uh, inco incompetent. He's he's yeah. a neglectful. He's a neglect neglectful god. He's a neglectful <laughs> father. That's true. <laughs> like yeah, I um yeah I I'm a Marvel guy for sure. My ideal era was '90s Marvel. Uh, you talking like, about like the Claremont era? Yeah, but yeah. that's because comics is all comics are like James Bonds. It was when you got into it. That's all. Well, I found my I got into comic books when I was like five because you know I was uh going through my dad's stack of comic books. He had a huge box of them, yeah. and I, I found his Hustler magazine. So along with comics, I I got into porn. So <laughs> I was like, all right, make it women and, and the Hulk. This is what I know. So yeah. I've always like I've. The same things that uh, that interested Robert Bruce Banner interested me. So like, I was like, all right. The first, rage. the first pornographic anything I saw made me stay away from porn for a long time. <laughs> uh, because the very first thing, and it shouldn't be the first thing, uh -huh. the first thing I ever saw was a woman with a cigar in her ass. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what this is, but no, no. I'm guessing it was the National Geographic. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was a, um, it was a hustler. It oh, was just this penthouse, <laughs> one or the other. Yeah, and I was like, okay, maybe I'm gonna step out for a while on this. <laughs> this, which truly probably was good for my development as a young man because it made me hold off on even looking at anything because I was like, <laughs> if that's what sex is, it, made, it did two things, Jeremy. It made me not necessarily want to have sex for a while or start smoking. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how they're made? Is that how they make humans? Uh, <laughs> like, I don't oh, ever want that. Boy, I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, I, well, now I get why they smell so shitty. <laughs> uh. so uh big bang the other thing too is like uh see i'm slightly getting back on topic uh -huh. um, the other nice thing about the big bang is for those of you who are interested in digging into all of the different reasons why the big bang is such a good theory is it explains why there are less of certain heavier elements because they can only be created in the very hottest, earliest moments of our universe. So there was only a little while while they were being created. It ex so, and it explains why there's so much fucking carbon. It explains yeah. that. It explains, um, it's a good explanation for why a star would start in the first place. <laughs> and for those of you who are interested I find it fascinating for a good significant part of the early universe like a good billion years in its infancy no light no light so if Jeremy in the early universe found porn he wouldn't be able to look at it <laughs> Right. there was no light for a long time because it wasn't possible for that to form and then at some point the Stars start to turn on and suddenly let there be light. There really is, but not at first. At first it was dark and desolate and hot. There has to be at least, cause you know, there's, there's planets that exist where it rains glass or like, uh, or gold or like various other elements. Uh, there has to be at least uh, one, one system where Every planet isn't like the planets, like our planet's made of, is surrounding lead, right? Right. Uh, there has to be one where the planet is surrounding flint. Yeah. As an element. And that, that would probably be the, the igniter. Like you get enough flint crashing into each other where that's the igniter that created the Big Bang. Big bang. Yeah. Just, just, a, just a shitty theory I wanted to throw out there. <laughs> and, no, that's a good theory. And if you're on the planet uh, with Flint, water's real shitty. 
Come on, it's a Michigan joke. Come on. Come on. God damn it. <laughs> Can I tell you something too? The water, not the worst part of Michigan. <laughs> not the worst. You know what's the worst part of Michigan? Pistons. What's the worst part of Michigan? Pistons. <laughs> Oh, they're Detroit, actually. I'm a Pistons fan. How dare you? I know. Man. I know. That's How why I did you? that. That's why I did that. How dare you? <laughs> Fucking, I can't even say anything because they're, you know, in the restart, they're one of the, they're one of the like, ten teams that wasn't even allowed to come back. <laughs> it's like the Bulls are garbage too. Oh, you know, who's? Oh, so I guess sometimes we'll talk about the science of the NBA. How are the Suns so good right now? That's great. Oh, like well, I think it's because they 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 actually at the beginning of the season were killing it, like yeah. for like the first eight games. Yeah, and then DeAndre Ayton got suspended for steroid abuse. Yeah, so he got he got kicked out the league for like twenty five games, and that's when they went to shit. Can so, I tell you? Can I tell you one of my theories about the Suns? Yeah, go ahead. One of my theories about the Suns goes like this. They're not always the best team, but they are a superior organization to yeah. – I would say they're a superior organization to the fucking Lakers as far as just how they run things, how they're behind the scenes. They have the best medical staff. Yeah. They treat their players really well. They draft smart. They just happen to be in a small market. Yeah. I you know, love the way that Charles Barkley talks about them, though. He talks about their, their shitty concession stand food. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> oh, the greatest. It's, nachos, it's so stale nachos, yep. <laughs> like they don't have jalapenos for the nachos and just chop up some pickles. <laughs> that's, like, right. That's, that's right. Hilarious. Oh. But they're an amazing organization as far as just running the team. Like Chicago, it's a miracle they ever won anything. They are so fucking stupid. Yeah. But they drafted Michael Jordan, and to his credit, Jerry Krause recognized what Scottie Pippen had to offer. Absolutely. Yeah. And honestly, Horace Grant, too. Yeah. But, and Craig Hodges and John Patton. Yeah. They did some smart things, but they're also their own yeah. worst enemy. Very much so. And they're classic, <laughs> they're classic Chicago, which is – they will try to make excuses while secretly not spending any money. Yeah, I didn't realize like uh, Billy Bean wasn't the the king, the king of Moneyball. It was Jerry Krause. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He was the king yeah. of Moneyball back in the eighties. And bottom line is, he couldn't have done it if you didn't have a Jordan and a Pippen. Because uh, so dumb. So dumb. You know, as as a Pistons fan, uh, I can't compliment Chicago at all. Uh, I understood. I'm, I'm from Illinois, uh, born and raised, uh, but I just can't. I, I and I will never compliment the Chicago Bulls, outside of the fact that, man, they really could have, uh, you know, fired Tom Thibodeau <laughs> like a season earlier and kept Derrick Rose healthy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, his need to play Derrick Rose 42 minutes when they were already up fucking, like, 27 points, five minutes left in the game. Like, dude, you just cost this dude his career. Yeah, they've done... It's with the Pistons now. Yep, they've done some dumb things. They, Their mismanage of talent is legendary. The only team that's worse, and one of your, uh, one of your Pistons is to blame, is the Knicks. No, he's not to blame. He's partly to blame. No, he's not at all to blame because they were shit before he even got there. Yeah, but he tied them down to the worst, like, long-term giving up picks for just jackasses. <laughs> just – now, I grant uh, you the Knicks were I, – I don't understand how the Knicks aren't good. You're in fucking Madison Square Garden. Their owner. I know, I know. Is terrible. It's amazing that you could be that terrible because you're in New York. How do they like, not they, just murder him and get a new guy? They never should have, like, the, the day you should have known, everybody should have known that, like, Dolan 
is the worst is when they didn't resign Jeremy Lin. Right. You're right. Yep. That's when they should have like, wait, wait, why didn't y'all just give this man just bring up the Brinks truck? Like you had your marketing, yeah, you, you had a, a marketing fucking uh coup there. You would have had the you would have sold out tickets for the next six, seven years. Absolutely. The other thing you would have done, you're absolutely right, Jeremy. And the other part of it is how'd you kept Lynn? Is Lynn a true star? No, he never was that. But he's very talented, fun, yeah. a team player. You absolutely would have had a guy who was ready to be the backseat to any number of other stars that would have at that point wanted to play there. Yeah, he would have brought in stars that wanted to play with him. And, like, you keep playing, you get rid of Carmelo when he was still worth something. You could have traded him to – to Portland like he is now. You could have traded him to Portland and got draft picks and kept all that nucleus, which funny enough, uh, if you go back and watch like the Jeremy Lin games, uh, like when he was like the biggest thing in the NBA, you go back and watch that strike shortened season and the people he was playing with were the people that Isaiah Thomas drafted. <laughs> like, those are the people that he drafted and signed. So the only person he was missing was Jeremy Lin. <laughs> and he just and he got the job for two more seasons and got Jeremy Lin and waited for uh, Marbury and and uh, Baron Davis and, and who else was a point guard on that team? Uh, Baron Davis was on that team. Uh, uh, Raymond Felton was on that team. Uh, like there was a lot, so many people on that team, and they had to bring out Jeremy Lin because everybody was hurt. <laughs> on a 10-day contract. Yep. Like, you bring that man there and you give him the Brinks truck because he would have yeah. brought every – he was bringing every Asian person on the man to games. Yeah, he was – yeah, it's one of those things, man. If you find a Jew who can play basketball, you keep him because yeah. you're like, my peeps are going to watch. Plus, it's also just good for people to see, oh, lots of, lots of different kinds of people can do lots of different kinds of things. It's just a good thing to see. That's uh, why I bought Mattis Yahoo's album. I was like, hey, man, fucking, uh, a, a, a rapping uh, a sitting Jew, all right? Yep. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, the Knicks. Ugh. I have a friend who's a Knicks fan, and I, I, make, I stop making fun of him because I'm like, it's too sad now. Yeah, I'm like, it really is. You know, the, the running joke is, He's like, well, you know, someday we're hopeful that New York will get a professional basketball team. <laughs> That's the running joke, and it's just you can never believe they're going to be good because they fucking never are. There's always, yeah. you know, and he he and I didn't know each other back in the day, so we've talked about those Knicks-Bulls series that were actually good series when Patrick Ewing was playing. Yeah. They were damn good series, and they were like – John Starks was such a beautiful prick. So <laughs> oh, great. He was just oh. such a hard-working son of a bitch. Because he didn't want to go back to working at the grocery store. Yes. <laughs> like, he earned it, man. He earned every minute he played. Like, that's one of the things that I – like, whenever people talk about Jordan being the best, I know we didn't evolve into sports. But, uh, <laughs> like, like, whenever people talk about Jordan being the best, I always remind them – that uh, the two guards he was playing against were uh, an old Clyde Drexler uh, and dudes that worked at grocery stores prior <laughs> to, like three years before. That's when he started winning championships is when all the people that were great were leaving the game and they had an expansion. <laughs> so they had to yeah. play all these yeah. jobs for two guards. That so here's what I'll say. Did. You're not you're – not you're not wrong. You're not right. You just, that's what you think. But, and you're not wrong. <laughs> but the Pacers team they beat, they beat with Larry Bird as a coach. It was a great fucking team. And that Suns team in the finals was legit. Oh, yeah. Legit. Now, having said that, yes, for sure, Magic facing, you know, Boston. Yes, absolutely. The like level of competition is ridiculous. But, you know what, what my friend Tom yeah. always says is he always says it doesn't really matter 
at the end of the day, the competition is the competition you faced. That's not up to you. Yeah. It's only up to you whether or yeah. not you're going to win. Like, I remember yeah. when um, the Spurs won the uh, strike shortened season, and a bunch yeah. of people said, there's an asterisk. And my friend Tom said, he goes, no, there isn't. Everybody played the same conditions. Mm -hmm. They won. It's bullshit to say yeah. there's an asterisk because the season is the season. Yeah. And he says that even for this year. He says, so whoever wins this year, they're the championship. And, yes, it's a weird situation. There's a pandemic. There's cardboard cutouts oh, yeah. in the audience. But, <laughs> but that's not – whoever wins, that's not their fault. Yeah. They didn't start the pandemic. I mean, then maybe they did. I don't know. A lot of these players do <laughs> stuff, but I don't think they did. Oh, okay, so oh. let, let me ask you a scientific question. Related. Uh -huh. You ready? Because yeah. I have this debate inside my head. Um, we'll get back to science. And, and again, it won't always be NBA. <laughs> Sometimes we'll talk about cricket. No. Um, so COVID-19. Okay. The virus. Okay. Would you classify it as alive? Ooh. Well, it's a virus, so it has to be alive. It's a mutating virus. So that's what I say. Yeah. The scientific con consensus, most people, biologists, say it's not alive. And I find yeah. that bizarre. So basically, because of the way that it replicates, mm -hmm. because um, it essentially, it can't do anything outside of a host. It can't live outside of a host. And it can't, not only can't it not live outside of a host, but it's not even closed. It's not even properly closed, really. Yeah. Because of that, and I know I'm not describing this perfect, but um, so any of the biologists who are listening, um, mm. but biologists would say that it's not really alive, that it's at the border. So then you ask the question, when does something officially become alive because it's a valid question. There's a moment something is life and there's a moment when it's not. You know, for us as individuals, after we die, we're not alive. But this is a thing that's not dead. It replicates. Part of the problem is it doesn't self-replicate at all. It only hijacks. But still, that's an active thing to do. So it's a symbiote. Yes, but even some symbiotes can be classified as alive. The virus, as far as most biologists are concerned, not alive. Recently talked to a friend of mine who actually is an engineer and far smarter than I'll ever be. Um, and he would say not alive. So when does something become alive? Huh. I did not know that. I haven't, I haven't much researched it. So I, I honestly didn't know that. Oh, wow. Okay, perfect. So here's what we're going to do. This week, both of us are going to read about viruses. And we're going to read about different philosophies of when something crosses over the border. Here's the big question for episode two. The science of when does something become officially alive? It's a big question. Mm. It's a good question, right? This go yeah, this this actually leads on my knowledge of genetics. So <laughs> nice. Okay. That'll be episode two. Oh, awesome. I'm very excited. I did not expect that to happen. That's 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 gorgeous. Um we'll pro we'll, Jeremy and I are gonna sit here for a moment. Um, I would like, uh, before we sign off, uh, just play a little bit of our theme song and then we'll say goodnight. So take a listen. I, I like the drums there. Me too. Me too. I was thinking that. Yeah. Good part. All right. Yeah. And I'm sorry for the levels. I know that was a little loud, but 
I'm still working out some of the tech. Um, yeah. That was great. Jeremy, thank you for being my co-host. Pat, thank you for being my co-host. Um, I wanted to do this show and I only wanted to do it with Jeremy because he's my friend and during a pandemic, we don't get to see each other enough and this will be a good excuse. And I hope you folks who are stuck at home found this worth your time. Good night. Bye.